Ni hao, huan ying, to the off air show with Bimmy and Tools. <laughs> See, you're getting so much. You're getting gist, you're getting information, you're getting languages from me. Hola. Ah, strangeness. <laughs> <laughs> on, this episode, on this episode of Off Air, we'd like to thank our supporter, Trove. If you're wondering what Trove is, worry no more. Trove allows you to own the globe. Yes, literally. You can own a part of global companies like Tesla, Amazon, Google, and Facebook or Meta. <laughs> <laughs> right from your smartphone. Trove is a fantastic opportunity for young people out there to grow wealth. The app has a fab interface that pops and it's also very user friendly. And you can get tons of educational content. And the icing here is that you can do all this with as low as $10, which is around 5,700 Naira. Thanks, Buhari. I use Trove and it's been an amazing time navigating all my stocks. And guess what? They're all gaining. I also use Trove. I love, love, love the colorful interface and you don't have to be a techie to use it. So make sure you download the app and follow them on all social media platforms at Trove Finance. And remember, all transaction fees are as low as possible. Um, first off, before we say anything, mm-hmm. have you subscribed? Did you? Better do it. Did you? Did you subscribe? Did you subscribe? Did you subscribe? You have not subscribed. <laughs> are you proud of yourself? Will it kill you? <laughs> look at our subscription <laughs> rates. Look at look, look at the subscription rates, really. Are you proud of it? <laughs> what do you mean? Are you proud of it? <laughs> eh? I, and you're watching it. Every time, hundreds of you come into the comments talking about my earring, my makeup, my hair, and this and that. Click the subscribe, will you die? <laughs> And then they're kicking, 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 kicking kick, kick in the comments. Okay, Did you subscribe? okay, please. Apples, kicking, kicking, kicking. Thank you. Anyhow, okay, so this week is a juicy one. Very. Right, we've got um, a few things that we're going to talk about, and then this week, this is also the infertility week. Mm. Um, so we had the pregnancy episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had two pregnancy episodes last season, and uh, somebody actually, one of my friends actually said, "You know what? You've talked about pregnancy, but there's some people." that are trying to get pregnant there's some people that are not ready to anyway so Mm -hmm. we just thought to do um an episode on infertility we've got a fantastic doctor Mm -hmm. from the bridge clinic who we're going to be talking to in just a few moments but what's the first topic we're going to delve into look i'm tired of people talking about this whole jada pinkett thing so she brought i was watching it last night before i fell asleep and she brought <laughs> Gwena Paltrow, uh, Paltrow on to the Red t- uh, Table Talk, and they were talking about sex because Gwena Paltrow has this sex Ooh, show on uh, Netflix. Sex something in, in Goop. S- yes, sex, sex love, love and Goop. Goop. I haven't watched the show. I've seen I've seen um, a few episodes. What Actually, is it very like? Interesting. So they they have uh, different sex therapists, mm. and they speak to different couples, mm-hmm. um, and they basically are obviously trying to improve their sex life. Okay. Um, there's this. So the I think I, it was the was it first or second episode there's this couple black guy black girl Mm -hmm. and they love each other they're married blah 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 but their sex life is not so great and it's he kind of just feels like she just should want to have sex like that (laughs) and she kind of is like no i want you know build up the build up the build up and everything then they have this test that they i did the test actually they have this test and it basically kind of shows your um sexual profile i guess um there's energy there's kinky Mm -hmm. and then there's another one i can't remember so the girl although she kind of seemed like she wasn't really into into you know like sex like as he was Mm -hmm. um her top thing was kinky what was yours um I think mine was sensual. So I like to be strong. Hey. I like to be caressed. <laughs> I haven't shocked you this is a come. <laughs> Can you please? Anyway, this is so so that of course is what good is. Listen. I kind of, for once, mm. this might be the only time mm. I will ever say this. That's I kind of agree with accent guy. That's she just needs to chill. Like, Who she needs chill? To, Jada needs to chill. But did you guys watch the no, entire thing? She didn't I, say no, that Will Smith was not. Um, I get. No, I that's guess. not what she said. I think that first I of all, no, 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 no. Let, let's first of all, I think first of all that from the get go, when the whole August Alcina thing happened and she came clean, you know, the woman could have ignored it, but she decided to actually talk about it, and I feel like people have made her a villain. For God's sake. Okay, yes. Yeah. So she had sex with somebody outside her husband. She said it. Her husband knows. And why are you swallowing Panadol for the man's headache? That's number one. Okay. This also applies to Tega and her situation, but that's another situation for another day. Anyway, 
I just feel like they made her like the villain. Like any little thing she says now, hey! And I think we all need to be careful, especially like you know about this when you are given a certain profile in the media, in the public eye. Everything you say is now misconstrued to fit that profile. Do you understand? And I'm just like, for goodness sake, this woman is much more than somebody who committed adultery. Or something that like, oh, she's insulting her husband. Oh, she's doing... No, that's not... I watched the thing and she said that her and Will have been together. They went around the table and they said, how many years have you been married? Um, uh, her mother said five years. Her mother got remarried five years mm-hmm. ago or something. She, um, Bruna Paltrow has been married since 2019 or 2018. And she said, oh, she also said somewhere that she's having the best sex of her life. Mm-hmm. And she was like, well, maybe she attributes it to being newlyweds because they just well, got Gwyneth, married. Gwyneth Paltrow, Gwyneth Paltrow, Paltrow yeah. She's trying to say Chris Martin's not good in bed. Well, anyway, <laughs> you see, that's not what she said, you see? And then, um, <laughs> what, 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 wait, 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 wait. And okay, Jada now said, finish, well, she's finish. been married for 20 something years. And she was just like, you know, there's something that we as human beings do we because you've been with somebody for so long you suddenly expect them to read your mind and basically know every single thing that you want and it's not fair that more and more often than not that couples should communicate that is all she said and all of some people took it as no it was no no and i blame and i I blame no let's let's roll the tape back and I blame places like the Shade Room who sens- they made it sensational and next uh, people did not read the article, did not watch the Red Table Talk interview and all of a sudden you just want to basically burn her at the stake and I'm just like, what did she do? I actually went and watched it. I was like, is this it? This nobody, is it? Nobody is, nobody is like, nobody is burning her at the stake. Insert it. What, insert, okay, it see, what, insert it into this episode. Insert it. What I, what I would I'm say, not. what I would say is this, right? For the longest time, for uh-huh. the longest time, people have speculated that Will and Jada have like an open marriage. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I kind of I mean there were a few things that I read I was like you know what they probably do and it kind of works for them mm-hmm. so the, on that on that level I was like completely like you know what marriage is not easy mm-hmm. marriage can be very difficult for some people especially mm-hmm. if you're like you know as famous as Will and whatever it mm-hmm. is if they have an agreement that's fine now however we know that Jada had something with August Alsina. Mm-hmm. We know that Will I'm has probably you. had okay. Will has probably had, you know, um situationships with different women as well. Mm-hmm. But my thing is, like the whole Jada and Alcina one, it's one thing to have like an agreement mm-hmm. as a couple in a relationship. Mm-hmm. It's another thing to have that be broadcast everywhere. Who broadcast it? The idiot August that could not keep his mouth shut. Shut yeah, up. But, but as much as as much uh-huh. as it was August's fault, for me, you could tell as much as Will was trying to be like, oh yeah, I'll be part of your red table and everything. You could tell that he felt some type of way. I feel that I feel that look, this is an agreement between them. Them having an open marriage, I don't really care because it doesn't affect me. Will Smith. But but wait, 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 wait. Okay. But now I feel that unfortunately, unfortunately, because of where they are and because of um this whole August house anything, I think think jada has to be careful with what she says but yes they can spin stuff it's kind of like it's kind of like okay let me give you another she example she has a talk show it's, it's they're gonna spin but then, anything then she you says need to be, then you need to be ready for that it's kind of like what happened with um prince harry and megan like there were especially with the british tabloids they were looking for d- different ways that they could spin anything they did into mm-hmm. into you know um into something negative mm-hmm. so as much as you know they could just be handling their business you have you actually have to be careful at some point you have to be because these people are just gonna look at that and just say like okay even down to when she was pregnant mm-hmm. and um when megan was pregnant and they found out that she liked um avocados and then the same the same thing that um kate um kate prince William's wife went through mm. loving avocados the, the way they put out the stories were very different so I get it that some people they kind of spin stories to make it more sensational but at the end of the day if you know that it's going to make your partner you know be seen in a negative light I think you can just be a bit more careful I'm you know? honestly trying to find the exact thing when I read it I was like where did she even mention Will Smith where did she mention anything about she didn't mention and his name but, but she, after she made that point she now said something about um after she made that point where um, she was like, "Oh, when you've been married for twenty, um, when you've been married for twenty five years, you just expect your partner to know." Mm. And, and then, she said, "And she said it's not fair." And, and then she said, yeah, and then she said, like, and then she was like, 
she was very what's the word no she, she was very like oh and then she was like oh um even when it comes to sex you would twitch your button it's in the, like she was very did she, you watch it but but I even saw, back I to what you her just her said her. even back to what you just said about yeah. Gwyneth Paltrow saying this is Gwyneth the best like, oh, this is yeah. no when you when you said that Gwyneth Paltrow was like this is the best sex she's ever had mm. are you trying to say to me that Chris Martin won't watch that and be like <laughs> wow <laughs> No, wow, no, so, 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 no, no, wow. no, no, no. So she's married to a new person. I'm supposed to say, yes, I'm having great sex. But the sex I had with Chris Martin, no, no, no. no I'm not sex. saying that. I'm not saying that. I just feel like it's you know. You could have just said you don't need to say this is the best sex I've, I've, I've ever had in my whole life. You could just be like, our sex life is pretty what great. It, what if it is though? We don't. Nobody. Not everybody needs to know that. But you should know about sex. Yeah. No, but you can say that I am very, very happy with my sex life. Our sex life. But is even fantastic. as she said, as she even if she had said that somebody that is looking for something to then, say will now say, "Hey, does then, that then, mean she never said this during when she was married to Chris Martin?" But you understand? Then, then, then the, the, the parameters for that person to be able to say that are much less. And if you like, you come down and say, "This was the best sex I ever had," duh, 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 duh. and Chris Martin's like, "Wow." You know, that's why I probably wrote Yellow in Trouble and all that shit. <laughs> oh, man. No, I just Anyhow. feel like people need to leave you the pink at uh, But you know what? And then, you know, Will Smith is writing a book that is out in November, mm-hmm. by the way, and he was being interviewed. And I read this really long article where a reporter sat with him and went through the book, read the book, and they were asking him different questions. And then, obviously, the whole... Red Table Talk interview with Agastya yeah. Alcina's drama happened and they asked about it. They said, you know, that they were very tired. They filmed, they said, I was very tired. I had worked yeah. all day and I had, we were filming that thing at like 1 a.m. in the morning. So my eyes were red. I was tired. All of a sudden, we aired this interview and the next thing you know, I'm a meme for crying. <laughs> and you we just like, see, that's un- honestly, that's really sometimes... Yeah, he was actually crying, you would say it. <laughs> I, I will, say, I will say this, right? If he was actually crying, he wouldn't. I will. I will say this right. That's the hurt. There, there are there. People do all sorts of shit in their marriages. Mm-hmm. I mean, you hear stories about stuff that's happening here in Lagos mm-hmm. and everything. Mm-hmm. People do all sorts of unconventional shit mm-hmm. to make their marriages work. Mm-hmm. And I'm not gonna say no. You shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do that because do whatever you want. As mm-hmm. long as you're not hurting anyone, do whatever mm-hmm. you want. But is the whole world ready to hear and accept that? I don't know. I don't know. So if you're gonna put if you're gonna put your business out there, you need to be ready for like a lot of negative criticism sometimes. So that's what I'm saying. Um, but I the whole Jada thing, the whole Jada Willis thing is so funny to me because deep down I feel like if Tupac was alive, she'd have been with Tupac. I probably don't think so. He probably won't give <laughs> her the stability tried. that she wants. They would have, she, something would have happened. You, you, you look at her now at 50 years old. She's going to be doing thug life with him. Like, <laughs> Tupac, <laughs> Tupac was very intelligent. He I didn't say he was he dumb, but at the same he time... He could have given just, up rap to be a philosopher at Columbia no, University. No, this person would still have been... You know what? Let's not talk about it. But I just feel like... He was very intelligent. He was very smart. But I just feel he liked beef. He liked drama. He likes... Mm. Is, is that really the kind of person you want to... That's the person you've been with in your Use. <laughs> all right um i mentioned earlier that this episode we're going to be talking about infertility we're about to speak to our very very special guest dr toyin ajayi from the bridge clinic our guest today is the medical director of the bridge clinic dr toyin ajayi welcome thank you so much for having me yeah thank you thank you for coming yes. all right so we are going to delve into this i have so many questions uh first things first we need to dispel this myth that when couples are facing you know fertility issues it is most likely the woman, or it is most most likely always the woman. So that's not true, right? No, absolutely not. And I think I think you know, especially in our culture, it's quite tricky because a couple gets married, and within like you know three months, it's like where are the twins, where are the triplets, and, yeah. You know, it, it takes two to tango. So um, women account for about thirty percent of infertility. So men account for about another thirty percent. Okay. Are they even say seventy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then you've got like you know um, you've got mixture, so you can have both ma- you know, a contributory factor from the man and the woman, mm-hmm. and then a small about ten percent is like unexplained. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. So because you mainly treat uh, you t- you treat couples, we're gonna do um, let's do the men first, and then mm-hmm. we'll do you know um, women. And for mm-hmm. women, we're gonna be talking about lots of different things. Uh, there's something that quite a few people, quite a few women, mm-hmm. are doing. I've had one or two friends do it. Um, this is when women freeze their eggs. So mm-hmm. we're gonna be talking about that in a, yeah. in a little bit. Mm-hmm. But um, from the man's point of view, or from what you've seen, what are the main fertility issues that men face in this country? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, unfortunately, 
bad sperm. Let me be really simple about it, okay? So poor sperm parameters, you know, um, you need good sperm to be able to fertilize eggs, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and actually worldwide, actually, we just know that sperm parameters are actually getting worse and worse. A lot of it Why? might be environmental. I think environmental is probably the most typical reason. So if you look back 100 years ago, sperm was much better then than it is now. So for the men, it tends to be that. But it's quite a significant number that's also just unexplained. They don't quite know why they've got declining sperm parameters as well. What is what bad sperm? Saying? What are you saying? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, okay, okay. Let's answer what that then. But I want to go to the, what, is the what are the environmental yeah. factors that... Yeah, Yeah. so, you know, I, I think it's, it's just, it's living in like an industrial age, you know, essentially. Yeah. You know, so compared to what it was like before, things are very different. So mm. pollution, pollutants, you know, the lifestyle factors as well. Diet, drinking. Diet, drinking, you yeah. know, wearing two tight briefs, all these kind of things. You know. so, <laughs> and so tight trousers, tight, yeah. Tight yeah. yeah. skinny yeah. jeans. Look, <laughs> your jeans are very skinny. Yeah. Very skinny. <laughs> right okay. now, your sperm is like, stop it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, what is that? Wow. Um, <laughs> you, you were explaining what bad sperm is. Yeah, so, you know, um, sperm need to look normal. They need to be able to move, mm -hmm. and they need to have the capacity to actually fertilize the egg. Okay, so mm -hmm. some sperms just look abnormal. They've got two heads, two tails. Okay, so sperms got like a head, a neck, and a tail. Right? Yeah, like a, little, like a little tadpole, essentially. Think of that. Two heads and two tails. I didn't tail. have a neck. I thought yeah. it was just like a head and a body. Like a little neck piece. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So any, so any sort of abnormalities, two heads, two tails, random necks. You know, that's also going to affect its quality. What causes, exactly what causes um, sperm to have two heads and two tails? Nobody really knows. Again, a, a lot of it might be these environmental factors that just been contributing. Smoky so shisha. Smoky <laughs> shisha. <laughs> oh, that's true. Shisha. I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> but they, you know, they, they already said that it is worse than smoking cigarettes. It's like smoking several cigarettes at the same time. So that can't be good for your sperm. Well, I, mean, I, you know, I mean, definitely. Mm -hmm. Smoking is bad. We know that for sure. Yeah. So, you know, smoking... Things that are just not nicotine is probably worse. So mm, marijuana yeah. or other things yeah. as well. So and marijuana like, is, is is bad for sperm yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So what from the from the from oh, the people? I like she's asking. So she's like, that's my point of question. Uh, <laughs> I just want clarity. I just want clarity because you know there's so many people that kind of um, say that it's better to smoke weed than cigarettes. It's weed is natural and all of that. I'm just like, wait a second. Are we? You know. Um, so from the 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 people that you treat here, what would you say is the okay? Let me get you to give like the top two or three courses so you said that there's some people that just have bad time you don't know why mm. but how many people have you seen What's and you've been able to course? say okay this you're, you've got bad sperm because mm. this 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 okay so for most i think most people that we see have sort of a, a reduced sperm count mm. right so they have sperm but just not an, enough in number therefore you know the less number the less chance of actually you know um, being able to get my sperm's lazy anything. No, that, that's different. So, that's so, 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 yeah, so you could have enough, but they're all very lazy. So we also check for motility as well. So when you actually look at when you give a, a sperm sample, one of the things you check for is, you know, can they swim? Are they fast? Are they slow? Mm. Some of them swim backwards, not forwards. What? Okay. So oh again, they need to be going in the right direction. So why? As well. So it go, how does sperm swim backwards? Well, why some, is the some, sperm of them, some of them just have, you know, backward motility. Is that hmm. Hmm. village what people? <laughs> you know what? I was gonna say that. I was gonna say when you said that some of them, some sperm have two heads and two tails. I'm like, that's somebody's auntie in the village. Just that is what. No, let's stop this. Uh, so I'm joking. Um, but, but but seriously, what causes what causes lazy sperm? I just said that. I didn't know there was actually sperm that was lazy. Mm -hmm. So what causes lazy sperm? Yeah, you know, we, we we don't know a lot of the, the thing with male sort of what called male factor fertility. We don't know a lot of the causes of mm. yeah. why you actually have the problems. But mm. It just is. But the great news is is that even if your sperm are dodgy um, with new techniques you can actually still father children so it's okay. fantastic so, so, like IVF and everything yeah so something called ICSI which is actually when you take one sperm and actually inject it directly into the egg so it doesn't need to oh. swim doesn't need to meet the egg or anything just, just pop it in the egg okay. and that's great that okay. bypasses all the yeah. abnormalities okay. as well okay. Okay. Yeah. so would you advise people to how, how do they even test for sperm count mm. for example mm. what, what, what do they do get? yeah so you know, you know if, if you're struggling to conceive so you know if you've been trying to get pregnant for like so what I say is that having a you know one year regular sex with your partner unprotected obviously mm -hmm. and you're not getting pregnant then that's a problem okay because 90% of us will get pregnant within about 12 to 18 months if, if you're 35 and over yeah I'd reduce that to six months Okay. Okay. For the women, mm -hmm. and I, when I talk about age, it's really mainly the women, as always, as the women, uh, yeah. because um, just... unfortunately we're born with a certain number of eggs. We can't produce eggs again. Mm -hmm. So our eggs have been there since we were in our mum's womb. Mm -hmm. So they get old and just get old. Yeah. Okay. So mm -hmm. The older the eggs, the poorer the quality. Therefore, it's a bit of a struggle to get pregnant. Okay. Um, and then you come to a clinic, and then you know the man gets tested. He gives us uh, he gives a sample. 
Okay. So she has to masturbate, give uh-huh. a sample. And then that gets checked underneath the microscope for okay. you know, motility, for how it looks, you okay. know, for the count. Like double heads, double okay. tails. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. All right, so how do you test um, a woman's eggs, for instance? So we know how you yeah. test a guy's sperm. Yeah. How do you test a woman's eggs? So oh, fertility in general, yeah, really. Yeah. So you can't test a woman's eggs per se, but yeah. you can test um, sort of how likely, sort of her uh, ovaries still producing enough eggs. Mm-hmm. They're still producing good quality eggs. Mm-hmm. So you do blood tests, sort of hormone levels, mm-hmm. to see whether you know things are as they should be. Um, you do scans of her ovary as well. You do like an ultrasound scan. Mm-hmm. You do an internal scan that gives you much better images. Mm-hmm. Um, and they look for like the, the little um, areas that sort of um, house the eggs. Um, they're called follicles. Yes. Little black dots on the scan. Yes. So you look for those. And if you've got, you have a lot of those, then that's great. You know, it means that yeah. your ovaries are doing what they should be doing. Mm-hmm. You've got good potential. But you know, the older we get, unfortunately, the less of these little houses we see because you just don't have as many eggs anymore. Mm. What about fibroids? How do fibroids affect fertility? Because obviously, you know, Africa. Uh, we're in Africa. Yeah. A lot of African women, a lot of black women, mm. really in total, yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, experience fibroids. Mm. I think you dealt with fibroids. fibroids I've dealt with cysts. I'm, yeah, I've yeah. had yeah. fibroids. Yeah. I've had um, a cyst as well. Mm. So how do fibroids affect fertility? Yeah, and like, like I say, you know, if you're black, one in four of us will have fibroids. Yeah. A lot of us don't even know we have fibroids mm-hmm. until, you know, maybe you're trying to get pregnant or maybe your periods are really horrible and heavy mm-hmm. and you go for a scan and that shows you've got the fibroids. Mm-hmm. But a lot of us don't even know we've got them. Um, but fibroids definitely reduce fertility because depending where they are, sort of depends how badly they can affect your mm-hmm. chance of getting pregnant. So yeah. some fibroids which are actually inside the area of the womb where the baby would potentially mm-hmm. implant and grow, mm-hmm. you've got a fibroid there that's really, it's affecting that whole integrity. Yeah. There's not enough space. You've got to take that fibroid out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's it's because um, when I had fibroids, I think my doctor said that if they're in the wall, they're mm. not so bad. They're not so bad, yeah, yeah. exactly. And then some you can actually leave yeah. because when I had, um, when I eventually had my surgery, mm. um, I mean, I had like a really big one mm. that had... Um, we degenerate. What's it? it degener- yeah, sort of broke degenerate. Down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so I had, I had one. That, um, then I had that like quite a, a bit of pain sometimes. Actually, it was, yeah. it was. It's like you're going to die. It was the worst thing. It was the worst thing ever. Um, and yeah, so there was, there was like a smaller one that he was just like, oh, I'm going to leave, and I'm like, no, 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 take everything out, take everything out. <laughs> you know. But um, so for for women, if you if you're not quite sure. Um, we need to talk about this this whole thing of, um, of people not being very willing mm. to come and get tested. Yeah. So if you have a couple, like you said, they've been together for about you know a year or so, mm-hmm. and um, they're under thirty five, yeah. they haven't conceived, they've been trying. Yeah. Um, what kind of things should they look out for, and why would you say, okay, you know what, you definitely need to come and see us and get checked out? Yeah. No. So I, I think, like I said, you know, if you if you if you're sure you're having you know regular, you know, regular is not once a week. Regular is like at least three four times a week okay if you're having regular sex um you know and you should not get it three four times a week yeah, yeah. it's work it's work it's work it's, it, i mean lagos traffic and you know that you get her you're making dinner yeah. 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 really three four, four times a week do you have any <laughs> do you have a job or two <laughs> minimum three times minimum ah three times minimum. wow yeah monday's well, out because right. monday's monday's like a heavy day you know <laughs> we don't need to know your time table <laughs> Say most people Mondays out. <laughs> okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah, so, no, no, but you're right. Honestly, I mean, because it's it's you know if you're if you're both a working couple, that's, that's yeah. another challenge because you're exhausted, especially in Lagos with the traffic. Mm. Um, but if you've had that sort of a year's journey of nothing happening, um, and then you know you, you need to just go and see you know a gynecologist to start mm. with, okay? mm-hmm. and they will then you know um, take you know speak to you, try and figure out what's been going on. They'll order some tests for the woman, so like blood tests. Mm. Also checking the tubes. I've got to mention that's mm. actually really important because. What we find in our sphere, like in Nigeria and Africa, um, the biggest cause of... Okay, let me dial back a bit. So you can have what's called primary infertility, where you've never, ever been pregnant before. Mm-hmm. Okay? But secondary is much more common. So you've had a baby before. Yes. They're now struggling. To have another, another they baby. They can't go have another baby. That's much more common, especially in our, in our neck of the woods. Mm. Yeah, interestingly. Yeah, yeah, much more common for us. And the commonest reason for that in Africa is um, sort of tube wall problems. So block tubes. Okay. What, and what blocks what causes exactly. the tubes to get and that is because um, usually because of um, having sexual STIs so you've had some kind of sexually transmitted infection mm. that's been poorly treated okay that's the thing it's been poorly treated so it's not, yeah. not a, it's not a I don't want to say it's not a big deal. You know, having having an STI can be treated, yeah. but unfortunately, again, in our you know, in our environment with the kind of healthcare we have and all that, yeah. you know, people don't seek treatments. People don't really know what it is, mm. so therefore, it gets left untreated, damages your tubes. And I don't really have any symptoms from that. You don't mm. really know you've got damaged tubes until you're trying to get pregnant, mm. and then you're going to have this horrible, well, not horrible, this painful test called an HSG, uh, which is the one, is, the, is the one where they put like a bit of dye into mm. you from down below mm. to try and have an outline of your sorry, send me a vagina. 
a bit of a guy. Mm-hmm. So they, and then it kind of outlines... Is it... I mean... Thing. Sorry, I just need to understand. That's fine. Do they inject it into... Yeah. yeah. Where, where do they inject it into? Okay, so through your vagina, into, your, into the womb. So through the neck of the womb. Yeah. I mean, but do they have to, like, inject it or do they just put it there and then they just... It's like them? in a syringe, it just gets pushed. Okay. So okay. why is it painful? Because it's a foreign <laughs> body. Okay. You don't need me here. She's telling you everything. <laughs> <laughs> Have you done this before? No. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah basically, so it's, it's, it's very thick. It's very opaque, thick dye. Mm-hmm. Like a radio, radio... What's the word? Radioactive. It's not, not like radioactive. when you want to get an MRI. Oh, it's like, it's like, yeah. yeah, it's like an MRI contrast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's just very painful. painful. I did that. That wasn't it's so painful. painful. Are you sure you had that? You might not have had that. I, I went into the... You know the big old tube thing that goes... That's an MRI. That's, that's what I'm saying. But yeah. they need yeah, yeah. this foreign thing to... Anyway, sorry. Yeah. You learn new things every day. So it's, 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 it's uncomfortable, but that gives you like an outline of the whole room and also the tubes especially, okay? Mm-hmm. And then you tend to see maybe one ha- is blocked or one... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Okay, so speaking of STIs, let's talk about STIs and men's facility. Mm. Because one of the things that... Um, I think we've spoken about this. We've spoken to them about it. Um, a, a lot of people here are not practicing safe sex. So especially in their young and wild days... I'm not uh-huh. pointing at anybody. I'm pointing at all of you. In their young and wild days, they're like, she looks clean, she looks clean, she looks clean. It's fine, you know. So um, how do STIs affect men's fertility? So the same way they affect women's tubes, they can also affect men in terms of sperm production. Actually mm. producing enough sperm, you know... The the sperm that gets produced you know, are not great sperm as well, so it's critical. Bad sperm. Yeah, bad sperm. So I mean, you know, I think both, you know, both both sexes just have to practice safe sex. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I just really want to drive the point home that mm-hmm. it is not always the women, because yeah. you know you have so many people. Yeah. I know. The thing is, this I was going to say somebody, but it, they don't know what I'm talking about. Them. It's actually. a function of tradition and yes, religion. Yes. There. There's always there's the story of the woman who's looking for the fruit of the womb, but there's no story of any man who's infertile in the Bible. <laughs> but I know I know I know someone so. that I know somebody that they um they've been married for a while. She has done I mean they've been married for a while um and they obviously been trying to have kids and everything. She has done all the tests mm. under the sun, and he's like, no, I'm fine. It's not me. Yeah, so then, you yeah. know. So how do you? So how would you advise a couple like that if you if you know the woman has done this dye thing yeah. she's, she's checked her follicles no, before you even get into this I, I'm sure a lot of the times is the women who walk into these yeah. in, into yeah. your offices yeah. Yeah. it's That's not true. necessarily yeah. the guy yeah. Yeah. it's usually the woman by herself yeah. and then when you so test her she comes her, first and you get yeah, and, and, then, and, then, yeah. and then they would say listen you know, we can't move forward until, until he we comes. test your guy yeah. because we don't know the reason you know? and mm. if you're, everything's fine with you then you know it's a good chance. A good chance. So how would you how would you advise a couple that are going through that? Maybe she's come to do she she came in first. Mm-hmm. She's come to do all the tests and she seems to be okay. Mm-hmm. And she's just like my husband doesn't want to come. He th- he reckons there's nothing wrong with him. Yeah. What do you what do you do? You know it's it's tricky because you know it's, it's it's not like you know we can call the call the husband or the partner. I was going to ask that. Do you take the phone and call no. him and say, Mister X Y Z? No, I mean you can't because you, you, because at that stage you're still, you know he hasn't yet presented to you. So, yeah, you know, so it's he, not your patient. You know, she, she just has to convince him, and you know, hopefully with you know information from shows like this and you know whatever she can gather. It's just to really try and convince him to come in. So I'm going to ask you about this because this is something that was talked about, um, I think, a good few weeks ago. It was quite heavy on social media. Um, apparently, in Nigeria, we have the highest cases of paternity fraud. Allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. Allegedly. Mm. Um, so have you ever had to deal with a situation mm. where um, you're treating a couple or something and they have kids? And then the guy comes and you realise that he's got bad sperm and he's had bad sperm for a while and there was no way he could fuck those kids. So we haven't... And that's because we we put a lot of things in place to, to prevent that happening in terms okay. of... Um, you know, we, just write, you know, we just have a lot of things in place to prevent that kind of stuff happening. You know, but there are definitely you know, practices you know, in this country where there, there, are no, there are no checks and balances. Mm. You know, so anybody can come and say whatever. You know, people, people will come and ask. It doesn't happen often you know but you get people asking you know okay listen so maybe the man comes in by himself okay? yeah so th- this is an example the man comes in by himself maybe he knows already that he's actually got bad sperm mm-hmm. so maybe from before so he comes and gets checks and he confirm you've got maybe you've got no sperm zero sperm mm-hmm. okay? which, he has which, four kids which, which yeah no no he might not have any kids but, he, but he'll say okay don't tell my wife i just use some you know donated sperm yeah so don't let her know ah uh, yeah yeah now there's some places that will happily do that 
fun. I'm happy to say that we would not have, you know, because you know we're, we're ethical. So if, you know that that's just not cool. Whoa. But, but you know, but you hear it. this is what happens. This is what happens. Ah, what so happens. rather than I've but, never heard this before. So I am I'm not blown as well. away. Like because what? that can definitely won't that cause won't that most likely cause issues in the future? Because I know if you're trying to like for for example emigrate to um, to a different country, you need to show that there's you need mm. to do a DNA test. Mm. So what happens then? So then you now turn it on her head and exactly. say, uh-huh. you, 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 you went out and did something, yeah. Because I, I, th- I think again, what people forget, when, especially in, in IVF, is that you, know, you have to think about the welfare of the unborn child. And mm. then you, do. you can't just do stuff. Mm. Of course, you can do stuff, but then what about the child? Mm. You have to, you have to consider the welfare of the unborn child. Mm. So that, so that's why I would, we would never do that. But so, so he, so, so they would rather like be basically fraudulent they just sit down and tell their wife yeah. that look yeah. honey this is what's oh yeah. that's sad because again culturally as a man you know you know you know yeah yeah culture, yeah you, know, you can't you know it's, it's as if you know guys you know you're not, you're not less of a man if you have sperm problems you're not less of a man <laughs> so i'm looking at you you're not less of a man if you have sperm problems. <laughs> <laughs> i'm just telling okay, you guys you know, just you know yeah. Okay, let's talk about... Do you want to talk about the egg freezing? Thing? Yeah, let's talk about egg freezing. Yeah. So um, this is something that um, a lot of, you know, women, a lot of women of... Um, uh, I don't want to say a certain age. I have, like... I've had, like, one or two friends that have mm-hmm. done it. And um, one of my friends, she did it because, you know, she wanted to settle down, but she didn't want to just settle down with anyone, mm-hmm. which I can... I believe there are a lot of women, you know, in that situation. Um, and she decided, look, I really want to have kids. I need to make sure that, you know, when the time comes... Mm-hmm. I still have like mm, good eggs, good eggs mm. so she decided to freeze her eggs and I had never like I, I mean I'd heard of it but it just seemed like something that you know wasn't really done in these parts and everything mm. and I think there's still like um, quite a lot of taboo mm. around that I, and I don't understand yes, why mm. no 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 mm. it's something that that's because uh, we actually wanted to get somebody that had done it mm. to come in to come here and speak and then there's a bit of you know resistance I don't want to you know talk about it I don't want to say this mm. so it is something that's still a little bit taboo that is kind of like and you're just gonna find a husband and have kids now and some women don't want and I, I understand you don't want to just have you know a kid with anyone so we're seeing a rise in this of course so can you just take us through the process of egg freezing um, how much it costs how long you can freeze your eggs for when you should actually get it done mm. yeah no, absolutely and I, I think all, the, all those points you made are really valid you know mm. people just say go, go and find a husband like it's easy yeah. <laughs> to find a husband but the reality is we have, we have a lot of you know Young women who are career minded who are just trying to get themselves to you know, mm, sort of that yeah, mm-hmm. and therefore you know this is a fantastic option. There's also actually um, an option you know if maybe you're having cancer treatment as well actually. You know, okay. so you actually because a lot of cancer treatment you know will actually just basically just you know zap, do, your, zap, yeah. zap your ovaries. And, so, and again, men can the freeze their sperm as well. Yeah, can't yeah they? And men can also yeah. freeze their sperm as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so egg freezing for, for women. So again, you know, with the women and eggs, it all depends about quality. Mm-hmm. Quality is probably more important than quantity. All right. And the older you are, your quality will decrease. That's just reality mm. of being a woman when so, you say older like what age so um, you know once you're over 35 fertility declines your egg quality starts dropping off mm-hmm. again if you're over 40 at all yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> do you know the craziest thing so when I got pregnant um, I can't remember how old I was when I, the first time I got pregnant um, I remember going to the doctor and they ha- have all these questions they need to ask mm. you and she said, um, so <laughs> she was like, oh, you know, this is your first. I was like, yeah. And she's like, oh, yeah. So um, how old are you again? And I told her. She goes, oh, so this is considered a geriatric pregnancy. Mm. I said, God punish you. What's a geriatric pregnancy? I'm like, I don't have a geriatric pregnancy. But basically, it's once you're in your 30s, mm. really, mm. once you kind of get to your mid-30s, yeah. it starts declining, which I just think is so unfair for women. Well, you know, I mean, it's so 35 and above is sort of what your class is. Old, Jerry. reproductively speaking, mm-hmm. not 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 old in any other way. But you know, from an egg point of view, because like I said before, your eggs have been there since you were a fetus yeah. in your mum. Okay, so the egg, this egg, the egg coming this month might be one that's been there since you know, okay, whatever. So therefore, the quality just you know, it's, yeah. it's not it's not what it is. And then you get much um, you know, much more likely to get things like you know, chromosomal abnormalities, Down yeah. syndrome, all that kind of stuff comes with age as well, purely because of the egg. Um, the eggs being a bit older. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you want to freeze your eggs, you know, thirty five and below. Okay. This is the best. This is the best time. So does it mean if you're from, over from thirty-five, um, I, do they turn them away or they just let them know? Look, the quality we're gonna, f- we might find, will not, yeah. might not be yeah. up to. I mean, because we still see women in their forties who yeah. still get pregnant like that, like that, yeah. and yeah. The, the children are normal or whatever. So it's just, yeah, like a precaution. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, th- I think you know, you're, le- you're letting them know again that you know to get the best chance, it's better to do it at this age bracket. You know, mm-hmm. but if you come when you're thirty-eight, you know. 
you might not say no, but mm-hmm. you have to really counsel them really, really well for them to understand that it might not work. Okay. Mm-hmm. And even if it works, you might not get enough eggs. And mm-hmm. even if you do get eggs, they might not get fertilized. You know, mm-hmm. so you have to just let them really know very clearly that, you know, so all the steps. How many times happen. did you get Jenna Jackson's name mentioned when she had a baby at fifty? And they would have well, Jenna Jackson had a baby at fifty. Well, what about Naomi Campbell? I'm still yeah. wondering whether Naomi Campbell. I don't hmm. think she had because she was. Because she didn't tell us whether. I, I, I don't know, think so because she, she was in Nigeria. Mm-hmm. She was in, in Nigeria. Well, she well, no, 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 not the time, but she was, she was, um, I think she was in Nigeria like a few months before. Mm-hmm. So I don't think she was, I don't think she was. Um, we're going to talk about surrogacy. She was pregnant. Okay, I don't yeah. think she was um, actually fit to be pregnant, but mm-hmm. I, we need to talk about surrogacy. Well. We need mm-hmm. to talk about um, uh, all of these different things because I still feel that there is such a taboo mm-hmm. around, you Some know, yeah, there's somebody that I was talking to um, about surrogacy and she just was like, and I'm like, but it's mm. it's your, you know. Mm. Anyways, yeah. uh, back to this whole egg yeah. freezing thing. So the mm. process, please. Okay, so you, you basically, you have to go through IVF, essentially, to have eggs frozen, okay? Mm-hmm. And what I mean by that is that, so you come and get all your assessments done. So first of all, it's very important for us to check that you can actually go through it in terms of you've got, you've got ovaries that are good, likely to produce good eggs, mm. your hormonals are mm-hmm. you know, good to go mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff. Like your womb also looks normal when you do a scan. Um, and then you go through, you take some medications to sort of um, stimulate your ovaries. So normally every month, mm-hmm. you know, you release one egg, yeah. that's what you normally do. But IVF, you want to release a lot of eggs mm-hmm. to collect more eggs. Okay. So you have medications to mm-hmm. essentially make you produce more eggs. Okay. But important, you have to get monitored to get regular scans during that sort of period of mm-hmm. producing the eggs. And then at a certain point, based on you know how the scan looks, you know, we'll give you like another injection to sort of do like a final um maturation of those eggs and then okay. we collect the eggs from you and their collection is a very simple process and it's not painful okay. are you sure it's not painful well, no, it's what not. part do they inject themselves sorry yeah so they're injecting themselves to help them you know get the ovaries to get okay. to, yeah, to, to stimulate the ovaries, ovaries. Yeah. Yeah. I remember saying yeah. that in yeah. B Mary yeah. Jane yeah. so yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay yeah. yes yeah. so okay um, but their collection process itself so um, different clinics you know some clinics might put you under like a full anaesthetic some clinics will give you like a sedation so you're quite drowsy mm-hmm. some painkillers as well so it depends but you know it, it's not a it's not a painful process it shouldn't mm-hmm. be mm-hmm. it's not a long process it's about 15 to 30 minutes oh wow okay, okay. and it's no cuts in your tummy it's all done from you know through the vaginal route mm-hmm. with a scanning machine and a special little needle and okay. basically just puncture each egg collect it and pop it into the little tube that goes into the lab can okay. you damage the eggs during collection Damaged eggs, no. But if you can damage your ovaries, if you don't do it properly, so you have to have properly trained personnel who actually know what they're doing. Okay. okay. All right. That's so how long can good. eggs be frozen for? Yeah. So, maximum. Well, so it depends. If it's like so in the UK, for so we have no regulation in Nigeria. That's the first thing in terms of freezing. No regulation. No. no. No regulation or no oh. sort of laws surrounding wow. a lot of um, assisted reproduction. Mm-hmm. That's another whole conversation that needs to be had as well. Um, but like for cancer treatments, in most places around the world, you can freeze for up to fifty-five years. Because obviously they know that you know you might be young when you have cancer, mm. and you might not want to use those eggs or sperm till you know, yeah. you're significantly older. Mm-hmm. Um, but for like what we call social freezing, which is what we're talking about, mm-hmm. because you want to keep your eggs until you're ready, mm-hmm. when you meet Mr. Right or so on and so forth, probably a maximum of ten years. Okay, ten yeah. years. Okay, and uh, so have you um, had people that have frozen eggs with you, and then they've you know met their fantastic partner, and they're now like, okay, I'm ready. How does that work then? Oh, right, yeah, simple. So when you're ready with Mr. whatever, he's going to obviously give you the sperm that you need. <laughs> so when you're ready, so you come, again, you come back and see us and then we, you know, ensure that everyone's clear on what's going to happen. You know, full informed consent is critical for us anyway because everyone's going to understand what's going mm-hmm. on. Mm-hmm. Another really important thing is also, um, you know, ownership as well. Okay, mm-hmm. so your consent has to also cover, you know, if we separate, if we divorce, if somebody dies, who's going to be, who's going to own the eggs or the embryos or whatever that's formed as well? Oh, so they have to agree that ahead of time. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, absolutely. because Sofia Vergara has a case in the US. I don't know if they're still on basically lady from um yeah yeah um, well, basically yeah, she was engaged to someone yeah. and they had frozen embryos mm. twins actually mm. and then right. they broke up mm. and then she got married to somebody else yeah and she Joel wants to yeah she, she, yeah, yeah, she yeah. wants to you know i don't know what she wants to do with them whether I donate them or just what do you say terminate them no no so, so you can it depends you can either um you know you can you can donate them for research if mm-hmm. you're not interested or you can maybe say okay right i want you know, if we break up she keeps them or he keeps them you know. but so this, so this, this is different this is different That's because exciting. we're talking about frozen eggs and frozen embryos are eggs that have been fertilized yes so that's different so yeah. i'm imagining that if i came to you yeah. and i wanted to you know freeze my eggs yeah. they would belong to me they do they do yeah. no, you're absolutely right so for, so, for, so for frozen eggs yeah the ownership thing is obviously they're yours yeah so the main thing to um consider especially with cancer patients if you die 
before you can use these eggs, what should happen to them? Mm-hmm. Okay, and that, you know, it's a horrible conversation to have, yeah. it's an important conversation to have mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you're right. So the ownership is yours because it's, it's your egg. That's well, when it becomes yeah. embryos. But once yeah, you've fertilized different. with the sperm, yeah, they're embryos, two different, you know, really parties important. there. They're two different parties. It's really important, yeah. Okay. You want to have a question? question? Yeah. Okay. How long do frozen embryos last for? So, yeah, so similar, you can again freeze embryos for you know, 10 years, 15 years. Okay, 10, 15 mm-hmm. years. Wow. Like just five years. And does it does this because there's some people that um probably have reservations because they're like oh it's not done the natural way doesn't that mean you know the child can be affected be or no, no, no. you know so, no, maybe so, yeah. Yeah, there's so, gonna no. be scans and there's yeah. gonna be tests no, no, yeah, and, and studies have shown that there's no difference between um, a spontaneously conceived child and an IVF baby mm-hmm. okay. there, there's no difference intellectually you know all that kind of stuff. Okay. All right. No, Let's talk about no, costs. No yes, costs, like costs, costs. What's because the range? For example, if, if a lady walks in and says she'd like to freeze her eggs mm-hmm. for like ten years, yeah. So how much? Okay. So like I said, so it will vary from clinic to clinic. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, but probably on uh, an average, on average, to freeze your eggs and store for one year is probably about one point one. Yeah. 1.1 and that includes the process of extracting the yeah. eggs so, so, so that's them. for the procedure it okay. excludes medications medications okay. are probably about between 400 to 500 okay, okay. so about roughly 2 million yeah. to freeze your egg for a year and, and, freeze and, your and, for and, a year. and store it for a year okay. okay so do you pay like yearly and then yeah and then for um, with that you can pay you, there's actually a buy, you either pay every 6 months or every year for your storage so same amount pay, no, so you can okay. choose to pay for 6 months or for a year okay mm. alright what happens if you can't afford to pay pay anymore. You can't afford to pay anymore. You can't afford to pay anymore for your storage. Mm. Yeah. Well, we, we that we always contact you, have a conversation, try and see what we can work out. How can we help? So you know, what can you afford? What can you? Manage? You can't put it in your freezer. So so you can't put it in your freezer, right? You can't, you can't put it in your ice, 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 ice tray or yeah, something. Yeah, it's not gonna work. He's having a great <laughs> lab that's got proper controls. And, you Next know, to your stockfish and the right How safe? How safe are the eggs as well? Like, how are you sure like nobody's gonna come break in and steal eggs? Well, you make sure you go to a clinic that has got everything in place that it needs yeah. to have in place. Okay, so you need to, you know, so I, I think the, the take home message for any sort of IVF treatment in this country, because it's an unregulated industry, hmm. there is room for quackery. I'll use that word, okay? Hmm. So people, people will say all sorts, oh, come to my clinic, pay 200k, you get pregnant. You can pay 200k. Are you going to get pregnant? Do you know what they're doing? Are they mixing sperm? Are they might mixing not even be, I was going to say, might not even be your husband's your sperm. <laughs> your yeah, absolutely. You know, they, they'll mix sperm, they'll mix eggs, they they might not even transfer anything. It might just be like, say like salt water, you know, all sorts of things happen. Oh okay? my God. So it's really, really critical that if you want to go through you this go thing, you have to go to a properly accredited, you know, we, we do have, we do have a, you know, like a national body and mm-hmm. we've got some clinics registered. So go to one yeah. of those registered clinics. Yeah. Because um, oh. you can be assured of quality. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. You, you are something. What advice do you have for? Well, how much for guys if they're mm-hmm. trying to freeze, freeze their, their sperm. sperm, for instance? And how long can you keep sperm? Again, it varies from clinic to clinic, but sperm freezing is much, 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 much cheaper. Mm-hmm. So it's like it's always easier for men. Yeah, it's always, always easier. <laughs> it's much cheaper. I think for like uh, what's it, I think the quarterly charge is about fifty something thousand. What? I think <laughs> roughly. What? Yeah, it's significantly different. Okay. Why? So why? So why, why, is it, why is it very it's different? different? I also have another question. Eggs are very, sorry, sorry. Eggs, eggs are just, um, they're very delicate. Mm, yeah. they're much more delicate. Mm. And you, know, you need maybe slightly different things to freeze them. Yeah. Uh, another thing I was going to ask is, as men get older, mm. does the quality of their sperm also get, like, worse? Or is it the same? You would think, right? Mm-hmm. But, you know, you still have men who are 70, father yeah. and children. So... <laughs> Mm. <laughs> so no, and, but is it is it good quality is it good sperm? sperm you know, the thing is, is it, like, is it, is it sperm? super geriatric no, sperm? No, yeah, that's, 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 no, because I'm thinking of like elderly sperm as it's opposed to it's just a pers- it's just a personal thing because I feel that um, especially with the pregnancy you know process and everything. It uh, there's not a lot of the man is you know sort of just there but everything is on the woman and you know you have to do this you because have to we're do super that. Women, so we can, we can yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Own it. Super women. Yeah. Super, super women. Yeah. Super yeah. Women. Yeah. We can cope. Yes. Yes. Own it. No. I mean, can you imagine if men? <laughs> are men <laughs> we're commoners. If men, if men, I have a theory. <laughs> men if men pregnant. have to be pregnant, they yeah, will yeah, find yeah, a way yeah, to make yeah. it a month. Absolutely. Maybe you get pregnant, then they take then they take the they take the fetus out of you, and then or they would have like literally a ten. Months like leave before the baby's born, mm-hmm. then another like one year after the baby's well, born. That's why it's a theory, isn't it? 
If no. this one had to get pregnant, that's why it's a theory, if this, one, this one would we be on know. bed rest from like week two. Anyways, <laughs> anyway. But um, I mean, this is a lot of information I think mm. is very um, necessary for men and women to. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. But do you? So you you did say that men, as they get older, nothing happens to their sperm. No, no, no. I didn't. No, I didn't say that. Because she, yeah. That's yeah no, sorry, I'm not No, no. So no. I think that age definitely affects everything. So the mm. older you get, um, you know, things get. Mm-hmm. That's uh, poor quality. But the difference with sperm is that men produce sperm every 120 days mm-hmm. and they keep on producing new sperm. Mm-hmm. So they don't have the same sperm that they've had forever. From so this, that's why for them, them right. they still produce okay. sperm that are sort of fresh and hopefully, you know, okay. Okay. Yeah. That okay. makes sense. Yeah. So for. Um, Three month cycle. <laughs> so for, so for, for men, um, right at the beginning, we talked about bad sperm. So for men that are going through that, mm. what can they do to improve, mm. you know, the quality of their yeah. sperm? Like I've heard this term, washing sperm. What are they washing? Okay, so if you're, if you're actually doing um, IVF treatment, you need to wash the sperm. Basically, you just need to sort of spin them down so you just get purely concentrated sperm cells. Ah. Okay, because semen is actually just sperm cells with lots of fluid as well mm-hmm. you don't want the fluid you only want the cells yeah, sperm. so you wash them to just kind of spin it down and okay. try and get them the, you know, as concentrated as possible okay. so what um, but in terms of actually so, okay so you hear things like okay let me not say it like that um, so things like antioxidants you know uh, uh, vitamin zinc you hear all the kind of stuff that can be taken does it really truly suddenly just go, take you from like horrible sperm to great sperm no you know but it might have some sort effect, of an effect. Mm-hmm. so there's no harm in trying it for like maybe three months before you then come and do a treatment or try, you know, try again. Um, but there's no like cure for bad sperm. If you have no sperm whatsoever, um, the great news is you can get it directly from your testes. I'm hoping that's with a big needle. Not too big, but it is a needle. <laughs> you had a question? Uh, I was asking like, is there anything that since you're ready to give it, and then you can do to you know, keep it premium? To keep, to keep uh, a healthy lifestyle. To make sure your sperm is, <laughs> is good quality. Uh, healthy. <laughs> healthy lifestyle, mm. loose fitting um, underwear. Jeans? What about jeans? Loose fitting oh, jeans. Pants. Yeah, loose fitting. Okay. Yeah, loose fitting. Not, oh, yeah. Baggy pants. Yeah, lo- loose fitting, your loose your, your jeans are not baggy. They're not skinny. I mean, you know. No, no, these are fine, but like, but, you, but your underwear. Not that your underwear, under. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Mm. You know, boxers, not like wife ones, type of thing. Yeah, no tighty whities No, no tighty whities uh, now there's something that I wish that somebody had really educated me on. Mm. Um, so when you're like you know in your twenties, you're having fun, and you're enjoying everything, you're not really thinking about oh I'm gonna have babies soon or whatever. I mean it's there, but it's like no, far. It so yeah. what what should we do as women and men mm. to you know just uh, maintain um, checks on our fertility? What can we do? What kind of mm. tests should we do? What do we so we don't end up waiting till you know after we're married? and then we then realise oh there's something wrong so what kind of things do we need to do regularly so I mean I think, I think regularly you know having um, so for the women let me start with the women so for the women you know ensuring that you know you're having regular pap smears so it's like it's like all smear tests okay? mm-hmm. so every three mm-hmm. years once, you, once you're sexually active yeah. every, every three, three years every three years okay. yeah, once you're sexually active um, there's now like a, a, a vaccine you know, so we need to give our 12, 13 year old daughters yeah. um, you know, a vaccine against because HPV is one of the sexually transmitted infections that causes cervical cancer mm-hmm, so yeah. we can vaccinate our young girls against that mm-hmm. and really improve the reduction of the cancer and all that mm-hmm. circular as well is that also the one that causes infertility? what's that? the it's HPV causes? no 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 it doesn't, mm-hmm. it doesn't okay. but you know, just in terms of general women's health okay. kind of thing the main one for infertility is chlamydia Media, um, sorry, chlamydia, sorry, chlamydia, yeah, 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 the main ones. Um, but I, yeah, I, I think as a young sexually active couple, you know, practice safe sex. Um, but then you know, you, you can get your fertility status checked. You know, so you know, we can offer you, you know, simple hormonal assays. Just you know, let me check that everything's okay. The man, the guy can check a sperm that everything's okay. You know, you can do that. You know, if you want every. If you every I, I, maybe maybe I'm being extreme, but if you you know how some people you know get tested. If they have like a new partner or mm-hmm. about to, or in a really relationship, they get tested for HIV and all these tests. And if some, I know some women, some friends of mine who insist, mm-hmm. you know, they go with the guy to a clinic and they get tested for everything. Now, at what point do you then test to make sure that this person is okay and you're okay as well? Is it before? When is it when you guys have decided okay you're gonna settle down or do you understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, <clears throat> I think I think it's hard to answer because everyone, everyone mm-hmm. is a bit different. Yeah. Yeah. But again, you know, I, I think it's definitely a good idea. You know, if you know that you're in a serious relationship, mm-hmm. you know, what's serious? We can define that how we want. If you're in a serious relationship or in a monogamous setting with somebody, yeah. it's been a couple of years. Mm-hmm. You know, it's likely to 
go this way. Yeah. So, you know, you might want to know ahead of time. Another, yeah. an, another important thing to know is, you know, especially with that it's the genotype, you know, is the person got so yeah. the parents of the cell genome. Oh, that's, a, that's mm-hmm. another AS, thing. You know, mm-hmm. If you're both AS, you want to, might want to think about maybe not yeah. continuing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a whole yeah. other thing. But if both of you are, um, is it if a couple is um, AS and A, then it's best to probably do IVF? Because isn't it like a 20? Yeah, yeah. AS. If you're both AS. AS and AS. If you're both, both, both AS. Both carriers, yeah. both AS. Yeah. Um, then there's you a, have there's a, a, there's a 25% chance, chance of having a second yeah. child. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but back to your question, I think it's when you've had that, what, where are we or what are the we tool. kind of conversation. <laughs> um, okay, so let us talk. Sorry, I'm very curious And that's about if this. you guys decide you want to have children, because yeah. let's not assume that everyone yeah. wants children. Wants you, yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about... Um, uh, like things like surrogacy, um, I think there's still. I think we're a bit more accepting of IVF, mm. but there's still a lot of people that kind of you know frown upon it, mm-hmm. and then there's still a lot of people that. I mean, you don't. I don't think you have to disclose it, but there's still a lot of people that have done it, but then they kind of feel a bit ashamed. Mm. Um, I know somebody that um, did do surrogacy. Um, and she wanted to talk about it, but her husband was like, oh, you know, we shouldn't because, mm-hmm. you know, because of my family and everything. And I was like, but it's a fantastic thing because she had been battling, I think she had like really, really bad fibroids. Mm-hmm. And at one point they actually just said, look, if the next surgery that you have, if it's really bad, we're just going to take out your whole mm-hmm. womb. But they've been able to like, you know, save some eggs mm-hmm. before that. And that's actually what happened. Mm-hmm. So she, they removed, you know, the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so wh- why do you think people are still frowning at surrogacy why is it something that maybe a lot of couples don't want to even talk mm. about because our families will say this our families will say that why do you think we're still in that, in you, know, that? I, I th- you know and you know just that example you gave of that 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 friend of yours i mean surrogacy was fantastic for them because yeah. they, 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 they're parents yeah you know, they're their parents parents just um, three you know yeah um i think it, it is just cultural it is just still a cultural thing you know i'm, I'm not sure why we still think it's it's a bad thing or it's taboo, mm-hmm. you know, but it, it is just a cultural thing. You know, again, you know, maybe maybe there's a bit of shame factor that you can't yeah. carry your own child. You're mm-hmm. not truly a woman. Yeah. If your womb is being taken out, you're not truly a woman, which is all absolute silliness. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's not true mm-hmm. at all. You know, because some women, through no fault of their own, like like your friends, you know, have to have their womb taken yeah. out, you know, mm-hmm. maybe to save their life. Yes, or yes. Like that. You know, does that mean they now shouldn't be able to be parents? Of course not. And yeah. just, oh, sorry, go on. Is surrogacy something that the bridge clinic can arrange? Yeah, we, yeah, we, we offer surrogacy. We don't get involved in finding you. You find your own surrogate. Oh, right. Okay, but okay. we, but you know, we do offer surrogacy services. But we, we think it's important that you find your own surrogate and have a relationship with that surgeon as well. Okay. Yeah. Keep it, you Are there certain it. things you tell people to look out for when they're looking for a surrogate? Um, health status, you know, yes. age, yeah. all yeah. those things. Yeah. So, so we have quite strict criteria. You know, again, because you don't want to have a, have someone who's got any issues. So mm-hmm. the surrogate herself has to be between certain ages. You know, not too young, not too old. Mm-hmm. Um, for us, she needs to have had um, children before. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's okay. A, that's important because if she's never had a child before, you don't want her to then up with your child and run away. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, so for us, it's very important that she's got a child had a child before mm-hmm. that is still alive. That's mm-hmm. well. I see. Okay, so that, oh, so that's that, that that sort of that that potential. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not common, but that potential. You know, is yeah. not there, mm-hmm. um, and then she has to get screened for all the infections and all that yeah. kind of stuff as well. Make sure that her womb is good and healthy. So I, I had a conversation. I have these random conversations with people. I don't even understand why. Um, so we're talking about surrogacy, <laughs> and she was like, "Oh no, I don't want to do that because." you know there's how are you gonna be so sure that the uh, surrogate's biological material won't be part of that child oh i see yeah, yeah. yeah. so um I, I mean i'm sure that's no, something that's, yeah. that's, so, a, that's a conversation I mean, there, there, there are different times. types of surrogacy but again the kind of surrogacy that, that there's practice nowadays is that the surrogate herself doesn't contribute in any genetic material okay so the egg is from the the mum to be mm-hmm. yeah and the sperm so is from the dad to be and so she's, she's, just she's purely a, yeah. a carrier. She's purely yeah. just carrying the pregnancy yeah. for you. But is there no chance of, you know, biological material being transferred from the surrogate to the mother? I mean, no, the, no, the baby is inside the woman. Yeah, yeah. 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 But she's, she's just, just, just the, the carrier. She's just a carrier. Okay. Because you've done, you've got the eggs from the mum and the sperm from the dad. You've mm-hmm. put them together in the lab and then you just transfer that embryo, okay. which is their child, into this, into the surrogate. This chosen is carried for them. Okay, fantastic. Um, I have so many more questions. Um, I want to ask you about STIs. I'm sure m- one of my friends, uh, she's a doctor, she has a theory. Mm-hmm. She believes that there's some STIs and STDs in Nigeria that haven't been discovered yet. <laughs> because because you, <laughs> you, you, you people are just like rabid dogs just <laughs> all over the place. But can we, I think that's a conversation that 
we actually really, really need to have. I mean, we can, we, we, we can do another show on STI. Yeah, 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 we should actually. We should. Yeah, we should. Yeah, we should. Because I know that the rate of um, HIV mm. is constantly increasing, and um, there's so many people that get an STI and they just think, I'm just going to drink a bowl for seven days and it'll clear yeah, up. Yeah, well, some people just go take some random like antibiotics and they think it clears it. Like, you don't know and what it you're doesn't, does it? No, because it, it doesn't. Yeah, it's not been diagnosed, so how can you treat anything? And I think, and that's another. I don't want to say culture. That's that's another thing that we have here, where you know, um, we, we just we just treat ourselves without knowing what on earth is happening. I think it's also because we have this culture of walking into pharmacies yeah. and telling uh, them yeah. you're, you know, yeah. pharmacist, you your doctor. Yes. And, uh, yeah, that's one. <laughs> another thing also, I think will work. Business, you know, advice is maybe get like a drive-through pharmacy or maybe a drive-through um, doctor's appointment where you know you just talk to me and. If they now need to carry out more tests, then they can refer you and say, okay, we're going to carry out more yeah, look, COVID, COVID did one good thing. I mean, mm-hmm. everything can be virtual. Mm-hmm. So you, yes. can have, you can have your virtual consult with your doctor yeah. from the comfort of your home. You can order your drugs and get it delivered to your house. You don't have to go anywhere to have anything done. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Like, because I was at this pharmacy one time and we're all in line and you can hear what everybody's saying. And this person whispered, I want to get... And the doctor was like, I would rather the pharmacist was like, what are the, what, what are you experiencing? And the person's like, itching. What? Do you understand? The person was embarrassed and eventually left because they really wanted to get something for their genital itching and far, you know there was no place to be having it. You know, I mean, even, even in England, yeah. with the pharmacists they have like a little consulting room. Mm. If you want to ask more personal mm-hmm. questions, mm-hmm. Okay? like I said, we, we need to get out of the habit of going to our pharmacy for everything. You know? yeah. Go, go, to, you know. But it's it's because we don't have a very good primary care system, healthcare mm-hmm. system. You know, where you can so everyone goes to the hospital and then nothing gets done. So find a good primary care. Yeah. hospital mm-hmm. you can just sort you out yeah. okay and just to wrap up um, we're going to do we're pro- most likely going to have to do another episode on STIs mm-hmm. but for just to get a balanced view as well what are the key signs of an STI for men and for women okay so, so for women unfortunately you're usually asymptomatic Okay, so chlamydia, you have no symptoms. You don't know. You and chlamydia and gonorrhea can lead to infertility. Yeah, so chlamydia, chlamydia and gonorrhea are the ones that tend to damage your tubes. Mm. Well, chlamydia most especially. And then, you know, when you don't want to have a baby, you then find your tubes are you know, shattered. But you tend to not have any, you tend to have nothing no at all. You, you're usually asymptomatic. Mm. You're usually asymptomatic. So it's like a silent, you know, killer. Wow. Well, can it be yeah. so, Can it be detected during like a, a pap smear? Um, not a pap smear, but if you do, maybe you had maybe you had discharge for something else, and then you went to your doctor and they did some vaginal swabs. Mm-hmm. They might then pick it up, but they need special swabs and special media for chlamydia. So you've got to mm-hmm. actually test for it specifically. So okay, okay. yeah. Um, but for the men, if they have gonorrhea, they have you know discharge, so they know they have something going on. Can men get chlamydia? Mm, gonorrhea is that thing. Really. Gonorrhea is a thing. Yeah. What are the <laughs> symptoms of gonorrhea for men? Yeah, yeah. So it's usually discharge. Just color, you know, color, discharge. You know, so, like a particular color, uh, like a like a. I don't want to get too icky. Yeah, but like... <laughs> no, 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 they need to know. They need to know. Okay, okay, okay. Like, like, so yeah. bad, so bad like smelling. An odorous, unpleasant... And a different colour as well. discharge. Mm. Yeah, so like a green or... So all these things... Any abnormalities, guys. Itching. Itching is not normal. Itching. Discharge is not normal. Peeing painfully is not normal. Go and see your doctor, not your pharmacist. Yeah. <laughs> and I go it's good, but it can't cure everything. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Do you guys have questions? Oh, no, no. Are you sure? No, 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 feel free. No, no, no. We're family. Yeah, feel free. You're free. Feel free. <laughs> feel free. <laughs> <laughs> any <laughs> any discharges? <laughs> ask, ask. What you any painful peeing? <laughs> Who has a question? Any itchiness? Stop now. Who has a question? Diet you can recommend. Sorry? Diets. You can recommend. For... Help. Help, uh, yeah. yeah, foods and yeah, stuff. So good sperm for yeah, good sperm. Diet to make your sperm strong. Yeah, is that what you're asking? Yeah, like what's what's what should they mm, eat cola. to? <laughs> cola, <laughs> not. <laughs> um, there, there, there's, there's nothing specific. I think just it's, it's just to have a healthy diet and not be overweight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the main thing. But there's, there's no one food that's going to give you. So, but are there sperm. any foods that you should avoid? Um, F- foods that maybe make the sperm bad. No, no. Okay, no. Listen, let's just be just be healthy, I guess. So not not a lot Take of alcohol. Take your vitamins. Yeah, these these are things. So you know, reduce your alcohol. Reduce. I'll say I'll say reduce alcohol intake. To say mm-hmm. no alcohol is a bit me. Reduce your alcohol intake. Mm-hmm. Stop smoking all your things that you smoke. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Fascinating. Fascinating. Thank you so you much. You seem very by. happy about the not smoking. <laughs> oh really? Oh sorry, <laughs> brother. Mm-hmm. Don't let it be sweet. Don't let your spam be in my head. <laughs> Before your your spam is doing backstroke. <laughs> <laughs> For 
know what all is. Stop it. <laughs> um, thank you, thank so, you much. so, so much for stopping by. This has been so fascinating. I, um, so I feel that there are lots of people that are going to have questions. Mm-hmm. How can they reach you? How can they, you know, visit your clinic yes. and so on and so forth? Yeah. So they can they can come to our website. So that we have tons of information, lots of blogs, and lots of questions and answers on there. So www.thebridgeclinic.com, and that's the best way to contact us. And then we have clinics in we have two clinics in Lagos, one in Akeja, one in VI, and then we have Abuja and we have Port Harcourt Clinic as well. Okay. And so all that info- information on the website. So go to the website, you'll get everything you need. Where we are, contact numbers, WhatsApp numbers, um, and so on. So and virtual Yes, and you can do a virtual consultation. Virtual. Well. Sorry. So virtual <laughs> consulta- co- no, no, virtual, virtual consultations. consultations. You can book them on the You website. have your privacy and everything. Yeah. People will not see you walking yeah. into the okay. place. So you can book them what about people that I, I imagine that the, um, went back to like STIs and whatever? Um, the reason why we have so many um, situations that are untreated is because people are ashamed, are embarrassed. Mm. So I mean, the virtual you know consultations. Yeah, that's fantastic. You, is it over just over the phone, or do you have so to see their faces? It's or? up to you. It's up to you. It can be a phone call. It can be a Zoom call whatever you want I also know of a lab where um, if you want to get tested for STIs and stuff they have a code so you can't you don't just walk to the reception and say I want to get tested for chlamydia they have an actual code so you say the word Mm, and then they they know what it is yeah okay Fascinating, fascinating. Uh, thank you very much. This has been very, very interesting. Thank you. Thank you. I've had a great time. Thank, thank you. Yes, and it wasn't too bad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, special thanks to our guest, Dr. Tony Ajayi of The Bridge Clinic. Don't forget to check them out on their website, thebridgeclinic.com. All right, let's talk about this thread that has been going around on social media about some guy who tried to help his friend and somehow got pushed out of his own home. So he was living abroad and then his friend came over and asked to stay for, I think, a week or two. And that week or two stretched into years, during which this friend even brought his wife <laughs> to also stay in this house. And he found himself feeling uncomfortable, so he would stay, like, at his dad's house, pretty much, until... Because he just felt like they were in his space and he didn't want to push them out. You are nice, so this guy, first of all, because... We you would know, have changed the locks, man. Yes. <laughs> How you know? <laughs> if I speak to you, you know, nicely the first time, a month, because I don't like people in my space, first of all. I speak to you about it a month or maybe two months, and then and now I speak to you again. I say, let's agree on a time. I will even try and help you look for a place. That's how nice I'll be. And if after the agreed time, you are still there, beloved, I will change the locks. It's simple. And you can go and report me. See, you know how people say, oh, I don't want them to go and start saying people. Say it. (laughs) I don't care. I've helped you. I've tried. I've spoken to you. I'm going to kick you out. It's simple. I don't understand that. I would never, ever, ever put somebody in that position. I think that a lot of times, and this was his friend, I think a lot of times Mm. when people find themselves in this position, it is down to family members basically just taking the piss. Even Um, family members. If you're grown... Okay, you're an adult. And we don't have to, we're not the Brady Bunch, we don't have to live together. You get yourself together. And the worst thing is, the worst thing is, when people come to your house, they're supposed to stay for a two weeks, they stay there for like a month or whatever, and then they don't contribute shit. But they're eating your food. They're not cleaning up after themselves, all of that. That is, for me, that just pisses me off. Um, but yeah, like, uh, for, for I feel that a lot of people find themselves in this situation because, oh, it's a family, my cousin, my blah, blah, blah. Let me get, let me break it down to you. Even when I, when I have to stay with my sisters, um, like if I travel and I have to stay with my sister and everything, I will let them know. I will do the shop. I will be like, okay, you know what? Fine, let's go to Sainsbury's, Tesco. Everything that you need, I will buy it. So it's just, a, it's that's what you're supposed to do. to see. Never, ever, ever try as much as possible unless it's an absolute emergency try not to overstay your welcome try not to be that person that you know the person doesn't feel comfortable in their own home i would never leave my house for somebody that's that's where i got very irritated mm, that like, he left his house he was staying at his dad's house and stuff like i just thought you know what i mean you were saying something about how nigerians abroad always they always say you should help your fellow nigerians yeah no no no. i get it i get it especially because there was another story i read where this guy had talked um he was again in the abroad and everything and um there was somebody that needed help somebody that they knew growing up or whatever Mm -hmm. and people were like oh you know you've got to help me should be somebody helped you and everything fine i get that but i think have your boundaries there's so many people that on top of family family or good friends or whatever they just take the freaking piss yeah i feel like piss 
people don't can let me fall get on. Started. Yeah, people can <laughs> fall on hard times. Yes, nothing wrong with helping people, but also you, Seth, don't be. Do you and, and, and it doesn't even have to necessarily even be abroad. Even here in Lagos, Nigeria, or wherever it is you're watching in Nigeria, if you're lay, staying in somebody's house, try to contribute something, even if it's insecticide. Something just to show that you are you are useful. Do you understand? You cannot be in someone's house. You know that they put on their gen from six to midnight, and then they go to work. You put on their gen and be burning their diesel. Are you okay? Like you know, just and then if you say you're going to stay for just two weeks and you find that you're going to need somewhere to stay for extra two, you know, for an extra time, let the person know. Don't just stay there. Like you're not a fly. They're gonna notice. <laughs> They're not gonna notice. <laughs> you know, understand? I mean, and then say, and then also have some sort of respect for yourself. Yeah. I mean, and and get out when you know eventually, like quickly. If you don't have, if you don't have, if your finances are, if you're like in a bad way financially, there's so many different things that you can do. If it's basically making sure you get up and you help clean the house, mm. make sure the kitchen's clean. Just again, just show that you're useful. You you don't go to somebody's house, eat their food, just take up their space, breathe their oxygen, use their electricity. Scatter their Do you understand? Do you watch you on top of so they don't even know where they stopped in each show. That's how. That's how. Um, so when I when I moved here, <laughs> you know what? I have to. I'm lucky. I, I I think I dodged a very very bad situation. So when I moved, um, when I moved to Nigeria. I was, with, I was obviously seeing my parents for a while then I you know um, had like my own place and everything my sister's place was my place anyways and I was there mm-hmm. I was there and um, so somebody I got to know somebody somebody in the industry and everything mm-hmm. and then she was talking to me and then she found out that because I was staying like in a big house like it was a five bedroom mm-hmm. house and everything mm-hmm. so it was just me um, so I was staying there and um, she was she came to me sob story blah 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 she just needed somewhere to stay for like a month in my mind I was like I didn't know her that well but then you know when when people kind of get under your skin and you're like yeah okay so I was thinking about it and then something just said just ask one or two people that you know know her Mm. ask them like you know what she's like and everything first person I told was like hey don't do it she will never leave she will never ever leave so I I was about to tell her that she could move in that weekend. Mm, mm-hmm. I was gonna you know I was gonna say to her okay fine you can move in and she told me a week. So was, she's like don't do it. That she she stayed with me. It was supposed to be for a week. She stayed there for three months. And I had to tell her to leave because she had no plans to move out. <laughs> and I was like wait 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 I know what I'm saying but this is not really my house because if my sister comes back and <laughs> she's like who is this mm-hmm. I know what I'm going to say so thankfully you know I, at least I got that warning so I was just like oh I'm so sorry it's not my house blah 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 but um, I don't get that I don't get people that take advantage of other people I don't get how you can I would feel so funny mm. staying in somebody's house I'm not contributing anything but yeah I'm eating your food I'm open you know some I would people, get irritated some, some people might say oh well what if the person doesn't have a job so therefore they don't there have ways, income there are ways you they can make have, yourself useful go and drive one of these ride share cabs you shall Even make something you, there's, there's, they're always looking for drivers. There's something so, that needs to be fixed in the house. True. There's, if you need to, there's something you can do. See, I'm, I'm maybe because I'm one of those people who is like, um, before I ask anybody for help, maybe I'm down to like the bone. Like, I, I hate to ask anybody for any help, whether you're my sibling or my friend. I will look for every possible way. In, do you understand? Before I now say, okay, let me ask for help because I, do, I don't want to feel vulnerable in front of anybody. I don't want to. Do you understand? So I, I, that, I, will, I, I will ride a cab. I will be a cab driver before I... Mm. Do you understand? I will hustle that money. I will find it some way, somehow. But, but I mean... I mean, I understand people fall on hard times. But so if you don't have any income, at least try and not be annoying. Clean up, you know, don't eat up all the food. Yes. And all those things. Yeah. <laughs> Another friend of mine was... Let me tell how much of this I can... Let me just talk it right Talk it! Let me talk it. Let me talk it. Let me real talk quick, it. real quick, real quick. So, um, another friend of mine, she had... Um, so, she was... This wasn't a friend. Mm. This was her um, her partner's sister. Mm-hmm. Her partner's sister just came to just stay for a few weeks mm-hmm. and everything. And for me, I already was like, okay, this is going to be interesting. A few because weeks, they were, why? They, were, they just got married and everything. See, that's another thing. Leave, I don't believe leave in a, that. A newlywed... Newlywed... Yeah, don't go... The stories, the stories that I hear mm-hmm. about people say oh my my husband's younger brother younger sister all of that makes me very uncomfortable so she said that this girl came over to stay i think she was she was doing her nyc or something and she came over to stay and she said she would just be so annoyed because they would get up go to work still sleeping they come back find this girl stretched out in front of the tv 
nothing has been cleaned, but yet meat in the pot is missing. Mm-hmm. All of that. This person has cooked like half pot of rice, just chilling. So she just got irritated. She got so irate. She got it got so bad that there was a point where the girl opened the fridge and my friend just lost it. I'm like, why are you opening <laughs> my fridge? It's been <laughs> building. It's been building and building. So don't don't be that person. Don't be that person where they just you get titled, you get labeled a freeloader. There's mm. so many different things you could do. Like in that situation you know clean the house if you can't pay for anything clean the house even if it's look i'm going to buy the bread for this week i'm going to do there's certain things you do there's so many people that get too comfortable you know being in somebody else's space i don't like people in my space i mm, really I don't. don't like i've got kids sometimes i'm just like y'all gotta be here <laughs> you know i like i like my space and my kids have to be in my space because they're my kids but imagine like a grown adult i'm just and you're just breathing my air you're just using my AC, breathing my air opening my fridge why get out <laughs> oh lord on that note <laughs> on that note we'd like to say goodbye thank you so much for watching today mm-hmm. big shout out to our sponsors trove mm-hmm. thank you so much to our special guest Yes, Dr. Toyin Ajayi from the Bridge Clinic mm-hmm. for t- telling us so much. Yeah, very enlightening and very interesting indeed. Yeah. And um, like she said, go to their website. There's lots of information there. All right. Yeah. And hopefully, you know um, a lot of things that are not normal. You should go get checked out. Accent guy. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, why? 